Hello guys, so in this particular video lecture we are going to see the numericals on the aircraft air refrigeration cycle. Okay, so here is the statement given. A simple air cooling system is used for an aeroplane having a load of 10 tr, atmospheric pressure and temperatures of 0.9 bar and 10 degree respectively. The pressure increases to 1.1 bar due to ramming. The temperature of air is reduced by 40 degrees Celsius in the heat exchanger. The pressure in the cabin is 1.013 bar and the temperature of air leaving the cabin is 25 degrees Celsius. Isentropic efficiency for both the compressors are given as uh, for compressor and turbine given as 80% and 100% respectively. The pressure loss between cooling turbine and cabin is given over here that is 0 0.05 bar and the pressure of compressed air is 3.5 bar given. They have given the specific value of uh, 1 kJ per kg Kelvin and the gamma value is 1.4. So we are supposed to find out the mass flow rate, power required and the COP. Fine. So before starting with this particular uh, problem, what we are going to do, we first note down the given data and while noting down the given data, we will plot or we will draw the uh, TS diagram as well. Okay. So starting with first, uh, very important to find out what type of cycle is given over here. The type of cycle. And the type of cycle they have given it's clearly mentioned it's a simple air cooling system. Okay, so it's a simple air cooling system. Simple air cooling system. Okay, then uh, they have given the cooling load of 10 tr. So cooling load we are denoting it by Q value. It is 10 tr, which is equal to 10 into 210, which is nothing but 2100 kilojoule per minute. Okay. That is the conversion of TR to kJ per minute. So 1 TR is equal to 210 kJ per minute. Then the atmospheric pressure and temperatures are 0.9 bar and 10 degrees Celsius. Okay. So what I will do, I will just draw the TS diagram over here. It would be better to note the numbers if we have the TS diagram. Fine. So first I will be drawing the line of atmospheric pressure. Okay. So on the atmospheric pressure line, I'll have the point number one. I'll have the point number one. <clears throat> so with respect to point number one, I'll be writing the P1 pressure, which is nothing but the point nine bar. And temperature T1 is nothing but 10 degree Celsius. Convert this 10 degree Celsius into Kelvin by adding 273 to it. Okay, so this is 283 Kelvin. Then the pressure of increases to 1.1 bar due to ramming. Okay, so this is the 1.1 bar pressure which is ramming. So this is 0.9 bar, this is 1.1 bar. And we know that the process from 1 to 2 is the isentropic process. That is nothing but the point number 2 over here. So ram is 1.1 bar. Okay, this is the point number 2. Uh, they have nothing mentioned about the ramming efficiency, so need no, no, no need to show any actual point over here. So it is a point number 2 only. The temperature of air reduced by 40 degrees Celsius in the heat exchanger. Fine. Before that I will write over here the P2. Pressure is given for ramming is 1.1 bar. Okay. Then the temperature of air reduced by 40 degrees Celsius in the heat exchanger. So, the relation of uh, heat exchanger exit temperature we should get but before that I need to find out the main compressor pressure line because after the ramming I will be having the main compressor pressure uh, this is the simple cycle so after ramming directly I will have the main compressor so we know that from 2 to 3 up to main compressor pressure the process is the uh, isentropic process only it is the isentropic process only so 2 to 3 I am showing the isentropic process then 3 to uh, 4 along the constant pressure there is the heat exchange there is a heat exchange so I will be having the point number 4 over here okay on the same line over here itself uh, then here we will see they have mentioned the co main compressor pressure as 3.5 bar so here it is 3.5 bar it is 3.5 bar and with respect to the main compressor the pressure is P3 is equal to P4 is equal to 3.5 bar it is 3.5 bar then the temperature of air reduced by 40 degrees Celsius in the heat exchanger. Okay, the pressure in the cabin is 1.013 bar. Okay, so this is 0.9 bar. So somewhere over here, I'll be having the cabin pressure line. This is the cabin pressure. 
which is 1.013 bar which is 1.013 bar okay and uh, the temperature of air leaving the cabin is 25 degrees celsius so ideally if uh, we go by this particular diagram the diagram will be having 4 to 5 is the expansion and then 5 to 6 6 will be the point of cabin so i'll be writing the point number t6 temperature at point number 6 is 25 degrees celsius which is nothing but 298 kelvin okay then the isentropic efficiency of the compressor and turbine are 80 percent and 100 percent respectively this is very important so they have mentioned the compressor efficiency as 80 percent and turbine efficiency as 100 percent okay so what to 100 percent fine so as they have mentioned the compressor efficiency 80 percent i need to show the actual compression over here and that point will be the three dash okay i'll just erase that particular point so that i can show very easily okay fine i'll be showing the point over here so this is the point number three dash here there is the point number three dash now we can write the relation between the three dash that is the actual exit compressor point and the uh, this is the point of exit of heat exchanger so the relation what is given over the temperature of air reduced by 40 degrees celsius in the heat exchanger so it means that the temperature t4 okay the t4 temperature will be 40 degree less than the compressor exit temperature where the compressor exit temperature is t3 dash minus 40 degree celsius now here guys please remember the 40 degree celsius is the difference given is the difference given so no need to convert this 40 degree celsius into degree kelvin as it is you just subtract the value of degree celsius given over here so t4 will be t3 dash minus 40 degree celsius fine then the pressure yeah the pressure loss between cooling turbine and cabin is given okay generally there is no pressure loss is mentioned in the numericals but in this numerical they have mentioned the pressure loss between the cooling turbine and the cabin so ideally the cooling uh, process or the expansion process is up to the cabin pressure up to the cabin pressure but in this particular problem there is the pressure loss between the cooling turbine and the cabin so uh, what what the cabin uh, pressure over here will be generally the pressure of cabin will be here the turbine exit pressure turbine exit pressure minus the pressure loss pressure loss whatever the pressure loss will be so we are supposed to find out the turbine exit pressure because that pressure is not given uh, here they have given the cabin pressure they have given the pressure loss so i'll be having the pressure of turbine exit just a minute pressure of turbine exit at turbine exit will be equal to that is cabin pressure which is nothing but the p6 plus pressure loss okay so this is p6 plus the pressure loss is given as 0 0.05 now here pressure p6 cabin pressure yeah the pressure in the cabin is 1.013 bar okay the pressure in the cabin is 1.013 bar that is nothing but the p6 so in the given data you can write that also value that is p6 is equal to 1.013 bar so here i'll be having 1.013 plus 0 0.05 which is nothing but 1.063 bar is nothing but the turbine exit pressure which is nothing but the point number five which is nothing but the point number five so i'll be having one more line over here which is the turbine exit which is the turbine exit pressure so here i'll be having four to five the point number five will be over here okay and the pressure of this will be 1.063 bar 1.063 bar and on 1.013 bar there will be the cabin point that is the point number six and the process will be something like this 5 to 6 over here okay so ideally there won't be having any pressure loss but in case if they have given then the, you have to get the pressure loss in this particular fashion fine so here the p5 is 1.063 bar p6 is equal to 1.013 bar okay 
this is what the entire cycle now in this case they have mentioned the turbine efficiency as 100 percent so no need to show that 5 dash over or the actual point over here okay because the turbine efficiency is 100 percent fine okay now the next thing i hope you have got all the uh, clear idea about the problem now we will go one by one to find out the temperatures at various salient points okay uh, to go about this uh, what i will do to switch to the next slide okay so the relation i mark the process one to two in this process the formula the process is asymptotic so i am writing the formula t2 by t1 is equal to p2 upon p1 rest to gamma minus 1 upon gamma okay now the p2 that is the uh, pressure of the ramming that is 1.1 bar that is given so p2 is 1.1 bar p1 is 0.9 bar okay so we will be keeping that values 1.1 divided by 0.9 and they have given the gamma value as 1.4 minus 1 divided by 1.4 which is equal to t2 the value of t1 they have mentioned that is 283 so we will be writing 283 from this i will get the t2 temperature and the t2 temperature value is 299 0.7 kelvin this is t2 value okay then the process is 2 to 3 this is again isentropic process so this will be having t3 by t2 is equal to p3 by p2 rest to gamma minus 1 upon gamma here p3 is they are given as 3.5 bar p2 as 1.1 bar okay if you refer the data you get then this is 0.4 divided by 1.4 and t3 divided by t2 is 299.7 therefore t3 will be equal to the 417.17 417.17 kelvin okay now this is t3 i need to get the actual uh, what you can say the temperature at the exit of compressor so that is nothing but the t3 dash that is t3 dash so to get the t3 dash i will make use of the compressor efficiency and the compressor efficiency formula will be the minimum difference over here so if you see the diagram the minimum difference of temperature will be t3 minus t2 and the maximum will be t3 dash minus t2 we know that the time uh, 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 efficiency values are always less than one so minimum difference i'll be writing at the numerator that is t3 minus t2 and the maximum difference i'll be writing at the bottom that is denominator that is t3 dash minus t2 it is 80 percent put all the values 80 then t3 whatever you have got over here and then you can get the t3 dash over here so the answer for t3 dash is 446.53 okay now whether this answer is correct or not if you want to check you check that t3 dash has to be always greater than t3 okay that is the cross check for your answer for your calculation okay so this is t3 to uh, 2 to 3 process then process 3 to 4 where i is supposed to get the t4 temperature which is equal to turbine exit uh, sorry compressor exit temperature that is t3 dash minus the 40 degree celsius difference okay so if you subtract this i will get the t4 as 406.53 406.53 kelvin this is again a kelvin only okay don't forget to write the units this is t4 then the process 4 to 5 and this is isentropic process happening in the turbine that is if you see the diagram this is the 4 to 5 isentropic process i can use the isentropic formula that is t4 by t5 is equal to p4 upon p5 rest to gamma minus 1 upon gamma okay now p4 you know that is 3.5 by p5 we have just calculated okay this is p5 that is 1.063 bar p4 is nothing but the p3 we have written it is 3.5 bar okay from that you can calculate the t5 because you know the t4 value over here put everything over here in this formula and get the t5 temperature the t5 temperature is around 289.21 degree kelvin 289.21 kelvin this is the t5 then t6 they have given that is the cabin temperature directly they have given it's a 25 degree celsius over here here you can see so that is nothing but the 298 kelvin 298 kelvin fine so this is how you can get all the temperatures over here once you get the all temperatures then you can easily find out the things which are asked they have asked what mass flow rate 
power required and the CO2 fine so to get the mass flow rate I will make use of the uh, heat uh, capacity or the cooling capacity given over here okay because I know that the mass flow rate mass flow rate that I supposed to find out I know that the cooling capacity Q is nothing but the refrigerating effect produced so the refrigerating effect is produced uh, from 5 to 6 this is the process in which actually the refrigerating effect is produced from 5 to point number 6 okay and that uh, I can write this Q is equal to that is MA that is mass of air into CP into T6 minus T5 into T6 minus T5 so this Q is nothing but the cooling capacity given which is in our case it's a 10 TR okay so that is 2100 kilo joule per minute into MA then CP value I think it is given as 1 into this temperature difference you can just take it T6 minus T5 okay and both the values you have from this you can calculate the MA now the unit of this MA because this particular left hand side is in kilo joule per minute so the unit what you will get for mass will be in kg per minute it will be in kg per minute and the answer for this is 238.91 kg per minute it is 238.91 kg per minute so this is your first answer okay always remember to get the mass flow rate you are supposed to equate this uh, cooling capacity with the refrigerating effect and the refrigerating effect will be between the turbine exit point and the cabin point okay that is a generalized point you can remember then the next one is to find out the power required power now the power will be it is nothing but the power utilized by the compressor so the compressor process is from 2 to 3 dash 2 to 3 dash so i'll be applying the formula of power between 2 to 3 dash it is again a mcp into t3 dash minus t2 okay now the mass you have got cp you know t3 dash t2 all the temperatures you have from this you can find out the power and the power will be uh, okay now here uh, generally we find find the power in kilowatt okay so the value of mass you have calculated over here is in kg per minute convert that value in kg per second convert that value in kg per second that is comes around to be 3.98 kg per second okay you convert that value so that you can get the power directly in kilowatt because this is in kg per second kilo joule per kg kelvin Kelvin. So Kelvin Kelvin cancel get KG KG get cancel and finally have the answer as kilo joule per second which is nothing but the kilowatt over here. So the final answer for power is around 584.64 kilowatt. This is the power which will be required to get the 10 ton of refrigeration. And the third that is nothing but the COP. So COP formula is nothing but the heat absorbed. Heat absorbed or we can say it is nothing but the refrigerating effect upon work done okay so this will be in terms of temperature difference it will be t6 minus t5 because 5 to 6 is the cooling happening or the refrigerating effect is produced if you see over here 5 to 6 is the refrigerating effect so t6 minus t5 divided by work done work done is nothing but the compressor work that is t3 dash minus t2 t3 dash minus t2 and for this the answer is coming around to be 0.06 okay this is uh, around 0.06 okay? so that is how you are supposed to solve this particular problem the thing is over here the tricky things are nothing but this temperature given over here and the pressure drop okay though these two things are very important once you understand these two things you can easily solve the problem uh, such a problems over here okay thank you